Uh, Chad's about to hold the camera, so let me flip this. And uh, Chad, I guess, I'll come around this side. Sorry, y'all, we're getting set up here. I probably went went live a little earlier than I should have. It's got to face this way. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and take it. Here, go on that side. Sorry, guys. Promise, get it, get it straight. Get it straight. All the way, face it the other way. All right, let's go stand a little bit off to the side. All right, we're in business, guys. I promise the camera won't be too shaky after this. I'm sorry. <laughs> So today we're going to do a number two on a bag of sides, he says, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, a skin fade as well, and I'm going to let you guys pick how we get it done. So whilst I drape him, uh, we're, going to, we're going to see, we're going to make it happen, all right? I'm just looking for a place to plug in the camera so it isn't dead at the end of this. And shout out to Tomb 45, they just sent me a motor upgrade for the Babyliss FX. I didn't have a Babyliss, so I had to go and literally buy, uh, get one from a friend. Mo Cuts hooked it up, he gave me his, and we did the upgrade, and uh, so far it's, it's, it's worked out the way it's supposed to work. So, someone said they, they, someone already gave you a suggestion about low fade, so. Low fade, well I can't really change the, the, the height of the fade, like we, we need to put it at about the temple, is about where I, where I do this fade. Uh, but what I meant as far as you pick, is if you want me to put a harsh skin line in, if you want me to put a soft skin line in, um, you pick as far as that goes, and I'll show you that we can get it done, you know, no matter how we decide to do it. So, begin by putting this neck strip on them. All new Gamma capes are dope, and if you guys need anything from Gamma, you already know. Use the code EddieSave10%, and uh, hopefully we don't get this video demonetized, but I'm sure it will be. Do a, a harsh system. and show us how to fix it, please. You want to do the harsh skin line? You got it. You got it. So That was from Amber. Amber says, do it harsh. You know what I'm saying is um, something funny about this is a lot of guys tiptoe around putting My man Ivy Max on there, dog. What up, Ivy? <laughs> a lot of you guys tiptoe around, you know, doing a um, harsh skin line like it's some impossible thing to get out. It's not. If you know what you're doing, you've got your machine set up, right? All right, we're going to use the... Uh, Zuka neck guard. This is one of the Philip Wolf things. I love this. This will prevent any hair um, from getting under the under the cape for him. So it's just a great product. But a lot of you guys tiptoe around doing a hard skin line like it's some tough thing to get out. And trust me, it is not. And there are advantages to putting it in harsh, and that's what we're going to do. So we'll begin this with a number two. Um, show them what I got over here. I got the Tomb 45. I got the Tomb 45 mat that I'm just using to kind of hold my stuff. Uh, so for now, I want something that's got a little power. I'll grab the boost. I'll grab the number two. And we got a real ratchet half guard because I lost my half guard, so I don't even know what. But anyhow, we got this in the closed position and we're just gonna mow it down. Oh, Rusty's in there, in the house. Rusty, what's up, buddy? Be bold. So what I like to do is I like to kind of work this in panels too, like coming across the head. Like I want to make sure that I'm getting all the hair. It's really frustrating for a client when they leave the shop and you gave them a great haircut, but you left a bunch of hair sticking out. And I'll show you a little trick that just that I always do that'll help prevent little little flyaways from getting away from you. So I'm just going to come down the, um, to the parietal ridge a little bit where I'm going to put the line in just because I can't, I can't put a harsh skin line into something I can't see. So it'll just make it a little bit easier if that hair is a little bit shorter. So I can put a nice neat line in all the way around the head. So I'll just go ahead and I'll take a pass right there. So all right. What we'll do is we'll spritz the top a little bit, just a little bit of water, and then I'm going to comb. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause a lot of little ones to stick up, and I'm just going to redo uh, my number two. The little water trick really works. It's probably impossible to get every hair, really, but if you do this, you got a better chance. 
It's like the rain after you mow the yard. What's that? It's like the rain after you mow the yard. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, That's man. Funny. So if you guys got any questions, um, feel free to fire away. We're going to get started on um, putting in this guideline. And if you guys have been following the six phases and the way that I do things and the way that I teach, um, I want to let you know that this is still phase one and we're working our way out of phase one. So we're going to grab the Sabre. I got the uh, X-Pro blade on. It's the smaller one. And I do want to just say one thing, you know, shout out to Fort Worth Barber Supply. We will be over there September 11th. That's what the class is going to be. And the class is going to be on Clipper over comb. And I'm really excited because it's a hands-on class. We're going to provide mannequins and it's, it's going to be dope. So for the price that you're going to pay for that class, totally worth it. All right, here we go. We're going to stamp in this guideline. And this trimmer is the truth, y'all. This trimmer is the truth. This thing will remove all the hair. And this is not usually, you know, what you would want to do with a trimmer in most cases. I don't like doing this to my trimmer. Uh, in fact, I prefer to put the beat down, like as far as like removing all this bulk, I prefer to use a different machine for this um, typically. But as you guys can see, this will cut it really close. Which actually is a good advantage too, because when I go back in with the electric shaver, it's gonna make things easier. If there's less hair left over in this step, then the electric shaver, the electric shaver has to work less hard. There's less hair for it to cut too. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of one of the advantages of, of stamping in a harsh guideline like this. And we got the savers with a taper blade, and we got the paper blade on our rebel. So what would you guys like to see me do the majority of this cut with? Would you like to see me do it mostly uh, with one more so than the other? I'm gonna jump to the other side. This is important here, especially if I'm gonna put it in harsh, I wanna make sure that I'm putting it in at the same spot on both sides. Um, Amber wants to know, how do you feel about putting the skin line in with the clippers versus the trimmers? I, you know, honestly, Amber, I don't think it makes a huge difference because with my clippers being zero gap, it's probably about four zeros and this is about five zeros. So I don't think it makes like a huge difference as far as like the process. If anything, it just sort of protects your trimmer um, a little bit more. But again, it does leave a little more work to the electric shaver. So, you know, there's, there's that advantage to doing it this way at least. Now the disadvantage to doing it this way, does anybody know what that would be? What would be the disadvantage to doing it this way? How many people we got in the room, Chad? Got 30 people in the room, but only four likes. 30 people in the room, only four likes, and no questions? No, I don't see any right now. No questions? I can't believe that many people be in the room and there not be no questions. So. Does a shimmer blade become dull over using the clipper to get to the skin line? Absolutely. Which is the whole, which is the whole reason why I don't really like using a trimmer um, in particular for doing this. I like, I like what it does, you know, I like the end result, but normally, especially like trimmers that I really like, trimmers that I'm using to make sharp lines, you know, like this one, I don't want to beat this, this trimmer up. I'd rather have a garbage one that I don't ever use. You know, like if I pick up, I probably got a garbage one laying around here in this in this drawer. Oh, this ain't no good. The Andis XO, it's just gonna get clogged. But a, uh, a wall. Oh, that thing seems like, it's, seems like it's getting through pretty good, right? Oh, Ivy wants to, uh, the, the trim of the saber doesn't it get hot. The redness, look at that. Yep. Sorry, bro. I'm gonna put that away. <laughs> like, I was trying to move as fast as I was moving with the saber and it just wasn't. It just wasn't ready for that. So do you feel that the saber tape or uh, the saber uh, trimmer gets hot at all, the blade? Never. There you go, Ivy. I mean, in fact, check this out. You guys seen what I just did with this, right? I just did this whole this whole head debulk. So this would be like about the biggest stress test you can have for it. And it just so happens that I got a heat gun right here. And it just so happens that this thing is at 78 degrees. Several degrees lower than the temperature of the skin. So 78 degrees after doing a full debulk. 
Um, I would say that's that's pretty much not not hot even remotely. Your butt cheeks are hotter than men. <laughs> so, all right. Now I'm going to check this line. Um, I want to make sure that not only does it start at the same. I just want to make sure that this this line is really good. I, I'd like to bring it up a tiny bit right here. Yeah, I gotta see if my boy's here. My appointment. He was. Okay. You want me to set this on the? Uh... Yeah, I got it. I got it. All right. All right. We got a little. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape here. We're in pretty good shape here. It looks to be about the same on both sides. Everything's cool. We got the top, and we're still not done with phase one. So I'm actually going to have to do a little camera adjustment. Sorry. I lost my filmer for now, but I promise I'll get another one back soon. So I got a little stand right here. And we'll keep this party, we'll keep this party going. All right. So next step is going to be the electric shaver. And the electric shaver is the Rebel. Now the Rebel is pretty damn quick and you guys are gonna see how fast it is. And I even might have an FX3 back here that I can, I can show you guys and compare it to. Uh, but this thing is fast. I'm gonna go right up to the line, very close to the line and I'm gonna begin kind of flicking out. If you guys want me to get an FX3, let me know. I'm kind of paying attention to your comments. Uh, I got the camera facing forward. That's why the light's not as good. It's coming from the top. Do you still use the Uno? A absolutely, I still use the Uno. Uh, for situations that, that it calls for, it's, it's the best thing going. I love the Uno. What he's talking about is a single foil shaver, if you guys don't know, and it gets, it gets um, just as close as this one does, but it's it's small and it's for getting into little areas that are hard to get to. So you can see his head's still a little red from where I used that that Walsh um, trimmer. Probably shouldn't have used that. But as you can see, that this process in real time, not sped up. You know, this is alive, and this thing is flying through this. I'm already almost done with the shaver. I figured this is gonna sell a lot because if I could shave two or three minutes off of this process across the day, across the week, across the month, I mean, it, it adds up. This timing adds up. Uh, somebody just asked what's my go-to clipper for fading and I have two. One is my Rebel, exactly how it comes. It's just great. What's up, Mario? Hey, and shout out to all my channel members, man. I appreciate y'all. I can't believe we almost got uh, 37 channel members right now. And we're growing. And I released a video to you guys yesterday. So I hope that you guys uh, enjoy those really in-depth tutorials like this where we go through every single step. And I feel good about it, man, because it doesn't it doesn't hurt my channel. You know, I can release quick videos that YouTube that appeases the YouTube algorithm. And then I can release like vlogs and more personal stuff too to you guys. So it, it makes me feel good that I have a membership where I can just kind of, um, where I can just kind of make it like what I always wanted it to be, you know? 50 members in the, no, I wish we had 50 members. We got 50 people in the house though. That's what's up. That's a great, uh, that's a great thing. So, all right, y'all. I'm going to move this up and uh, I'm going to check some of your comments because I don't have somebody... What up, Marco G? What up, Rusty? He said, I put the taper blade on the Sabre, Slim Deep Tooth Cutter Blade, and uh, it was snagging. With the Slim Deep Tooth Cutter Blade? I'm not sure why. I have the Slim Deep Tooth Cutter on mine, and it's not snagging at all. All right, I'll let you guys pick which one you guys want me to use. All right, which one you guys want me to use? You want me to use the Sabre, or do you want me to use the Rebel? Okay? It would make a lot of sense to use the Rebel, based on how harsh I put my skin line in. So go ahead and pick. I'm gonna let you guys pick. You guys get like two more seconds uh, before you pick. And I'm gonna dust him off and make sure he's nice and clean. And while I'm at it, I might as well spray a little hairspray over the front of his edge. We got one for Sabre, 
One for Rebel. Two for Rebel. Three for Rebel. Okay, we got a channel member who said Rebel. I guess I got to go for that. I got to go for that. All right, Rebels it is. But don't worry, y'all who wanted to see the Sabres. The Sabres will definitely be making an appearance in this video. So, let's step through the steps. Now, in a way, this is the most important haircut you could ever learn. I'm going to be honest with you. Because all haircuts, all skin fade haircuts are an offshoot of this process. You have to be able to get from skin to a number two. And after you do that, after you can do that, you're, gonna, you're not going to have problems. Because then it becomes a different battle where we're connecting two to the parietal ridge. And we talk about that in phase two. So not to get too off track, let's start with the clipper in the open position. Fully open, push the lever all the way down. That's going to leave the hair a bit longer than if it was closed. And we're going to put a guideline in about the width of our pinky. And it's really important that you hold it flat and actually get it on the scalp. Get it on the scalp flat. Don't be so concerned with scooping that you're not hitting your lens. It's okay to scoop a little bit, that's fine. But if you're not hitting your lengths, if you're not actually getting it flat at a certain point, then what are you really doing? You're manipulating the distance, and then that's gonna cause issues uh, as we move forward into this blend. And the worst thing you can do is not know your steps ahead and your steps you know, behind. Because let's say you get a little bit lost in this process, a lot of you guys, when you go to troubleshoot, you start making more trouble for yourself. So. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we understand that our next step in the process, if you guys have been following along, is the two click and flick with the number one. That's the next step in the process. All right? We're going to set guidelines in, and anybody um, who's watching right now, all of you guys can do exactly what you've seen me do. I haven't done anything special yet. Nothing special yet. Hey, y'all know I got my tattoo finished yesterday. I got my chest, my chest piece finished yesterday. And uh, I couldn't be happier. I wish I could I could pull it off in a photo. If you guys want to see it, I, I'll show it to you. I feel like it'd be a little weird for me to take my shirt off of here. But I will I will show it to you if you want to see it. So I haven't moved the clipper blade yet. Um, at this point, I'm just kind of going around and I'm making sure that the guide that I put in is, is pretty even. It's looking pretty good. Um, I want to make sure, just like in that previous step, this is just as important. If this blend don't start from the same spot on each side, you're going to wind up walking yourself into some trouble that you don't need. So, bringing this side up just a tiny bit more because it was a little bit off. YouTube barbers will never tell you that. They'll never tell you that they fucked up. YouTube barbers be fucking up sometimes. And they don't tell you that. Everybody wants to go around and act like they're perfect. Well, you know, I got news for you. I'm not perfect. Neither are you. Neither is A-Rod or whoever. All right, two clicks. Boom, boom. All right? So we're going to do the same thing here. Now, let's keep in mind that two clicks is just a guy. All right, and I also want you to see that his, his growth pattern is kind of going this way, right? So I want to try to lift this up against that growth pattern. That's kind of my goal. If it blends into the top good, fine. That's great. Now I want you guys to keep in mind that when I say the two click and flick, all I really mean is, is we're going to start with two clicks and we're going to see what that does. And if you feel like you need to move it, then you need to move it. If you guys are smelling what I'm stepping in, if you guys are feeling these type of videos, if you guys like this, you got to let me know, man. I can go live all the time. I can do this for you all the time if you like it. But as of right now, 54 people in the house, 17 only liked it. And that's not inspiring a whole lot of confidence. All right. We can do this damn near every other day or something. This is so much easier for me um, than editing videos. But again, I'm just trying to find against the grain and I'm trying to stay against the grain. So even though it might look like I'm blending right now, it might look like I'm blending right now, I'm actually, I'm actually just um, putting in guidelines still. So this grain pattern, it's swooping this way important that I try to find what's directly against the grain. So there's basically three ways that we can cut. We can cut against the grain, across the grain, or we can cut with the grain. All right, now with the grain would be, you know, more for cutting like curly hair, black hair, Spanish hair, uh, maybe trying to get the waves to lay down, stuff like that. 
But with white hair, going with the grain does you, like, no good whatsoever. It does you no good. I mean, you can go with the grain all you want, and you ain't going to do shit on white hair. So it's, it's just kind of funny like that. All right. So for the last step, I'm going to just touch this off. We know we did it two on top. Let's just do the one and a half. Let's just be safe. And uh, we're going to wind up beginning blending in this step, but technically I'm still setting in guidelines, okay? Everything I've done so far, you can easily, easily do. All right? Same thing, two clicks, one and one half. I got the gamma dubs. Uh, so far, we've used all gamma dubs. I appreciate your uh, uh, comment. Uh, John Wheels, I appreciate you guys. And of course, you know, we got the we got the membership tab open, man. And I'm hoping to grow, you know, more members. Uh, if possible, I can deliver a lot of content that I don't, that, that I wouldn't be able to deliver on YouTube regularly. And like, as soon as they're done, I don't make you guys wait. Like, as soon as they're done, I push them out. Like, I'm not waiting weeks to get these things done to you. Everybody else has to wait a week, but um, channel members, you guys get to view it early. As soon as it's done, the thumbnail looks like shit. The description ain't right. All the other stuff ain't right. Uh, but you're a member, so none of that matters to me. Like, I know that you're here for the content. You're not here for all the stuff, all, all, the, all the window dressing around the content. You're here for the actual content. All right, I just closed it. I just closed the clipper all the way. And uh, as you can see, which I know the lighting's not really great from this angle. Let me, uh, let me address that. Matter of fact, I plug another lighting. I got about 50 lights in here. I promise you, we're gonna get some good lighting on the situation. <laughs> this might create a little bit of a shadow, but this is a strong light. That's better, that's better. All right, so. We haven't really done any blending yet. Everything that we've done so far, um, you guys could easily, easily do. So now we're actually gonna begin the blending process. So all I did was put in guidelines and we are going to start with it fully closed. And this is the key here. This is a harsh skin line. There's a very good chance we're gonna have to get this out with a trimmer because you guys selected to put it in harsh. Uh, but I'm going to look at the line like right here, right? I'm going to keep this just the corner of the blade. I'm not going to touch the full blade down. And I'm going to see if I can't get rid of some of this line. So just the corner, just the corner, and I'm just sort of flicking that, that, that original line. We'll see what that does. It might get your line out, it might not. It's like, you got to be reactive to this. You got to be reactive to this thing. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, this is just the step. The step is the step. Like, no, man, this step might have to change. It's based on what this hair does. Now, see, that, that actually did pretty good on that line. I haven't moved the blade yet. I'm going to begin opening it now. So I'm begin opening it now, and I'm going to begin kind of the exact same thing that I just did. Let me get this over here. Maybe I'll get another filmer here in a second. Let me see. One of these guys is uh, free. I'll be able to get a filmer back and we'll, we'll get the good, really good angles. So again, I'm still using the corner even though I just opened it one click. I'm gonna open it again. If you guys want, I could literally just finish off this whole side. Now I can kind of tell uh, what needs to happen here, because I actually got a little line here. It's not really showing in the um, camera that well. I promise you, if you were here, you'd see it. I'm going to open this again. I'm going to go over this with the corner. And I'm going to play around with this lever back and forth a little bit if I have to. For the most part, if I'm thorough and I step up perfectly in little steps, I usually don't have to play with the lever too much. That's looking pretty damn good. For a real harsh skin line to be able to get it out for the most part with the clippers, there's really only one clipper um, that I could say would do that. And it's it's got a lot to do with this fusion blade. It really does. So I'm gonna slap a half guard on here. Um, he said, guys, what do you debulk with? Close guard or open? I always try to close it when I'm debulking. All right, so same thing, we're gonna go two clicks. I don't even know who makes this half guard, but trust me, it sucks. Somehow the half guard thief got into our shop and three people are missing half guards. Again, I'm just using the corner again. Just using the corner. I'm 
Is he gonna close in here a little bit? Remember, I started with two clips. And I'm gonna close it all the way. I'm gonna stay right down here on the corner. Well, that's looking pretty darn good. All right, so typically, this is where we would make an appearance with the uh, taper blade pretty soon here. Uh, but I'm just gonna hop back to the number one because remember we did it with two clicks. So I could actually pick up with that. I'll start with the two clicks open and I'm gonna begin just actually closing it because I already knew I had to close it, but it's always good uh, to, to double check. So again, it might look like the whole blade is down, but really only one of the halves of the blade is down. Like the corner and the blade is down like that. Now here's where you're gonna see a big, a big, big improvement come in with the taper blade. I realized that the camera is not really showing 100% what it really looks like, which is fine. That's just how this cell phone makes things look. But you gotta trust me. Uh, this blend is starting to come together pretty good, and when I flip the camera, it'll it'll show. But all right, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Beginning with the clipper fully closed. Got the vapor blade on. And we're just going to take that corner and we're going to toss it up in there. Try to find against the green once again, you know. This green is jutting forward sort of here. Just the corner. Hell yeah. We got a cameraman again, y'all. It's about to get good. Y'all ready? Let's swap you out. Bam. Boom. Good. All right, so feel free to uh, shoot some comments because now I got somebody reading them and I can actually answer them. So once again, we still have it in the closed position and I'm just flicking away. This might actually be with my arm really good. Just create a shadow. Yeah, a little bit. Cut it right here. Yeah. Took it like that a little bit. Just using the corner. All right, begin opening it a little bit. Same thing. Just running over it with only the corner. It's kind of the secret to, to busting out a really hard skin line. Just busting it out with the corners. There's a portion of this side at the very bottom, I'm not sure if it's coming across on camera, uh, but there's a portion on this side that's that's not, not going to come out with this blade, I can already tell. Um, but love, love original Ostra 76. Any recommendations on cordless? Detachables? On cordless comparison. Eddie, can you do a tutorial on detailing a fade, how to do it, when to do it, best tips and tricks? Yes, I'm going to do that right now. Just stick around. So what he might be talking to, like what he's probably talking about is, is something that I sort of refer to as sandwiching the blend, where like maybe you spread your blend out a little bit too far and it's not it's not popping really good and you wanna really you wanna really have it, you know, do that. So there's a couple of tricks. We're gonna actually use one or two of them right now. Alright, so here we are with the half guard again. We're gonna hop up in here, we're gonna do the same thing. Two clicks, one, two, and just using the corner. And all I'm really hoping to do is just break up that, that darkness. Just using that corner. It's coming together nice too. I'm just gonna travel around the back with this so that we're not doing everything 20 times in a row. So when it comes to detailing the fade, I'm gonna close this all the way. When it comes to detailing the fade, you're definitely going to want to pick up the table blade. So we're almost at that point right now. Sandra, what's your question again? Blend fire, Sandra. We're almost at that that point now where we're gonna we're gonna begin kind of detailing the blend. 
and uh, trying to make it perfect, right? Well, this is not the tool for that. This tool is not as forgiving as a tool that has a taper blade on it. So that's why we're going to switch back over to, let me put these on my mat so everything stays organized. We're going to switch back over to the taper blade. Now, this is the sabers, and it has a taper blade on it. It doesn't come with a taper blade, by the way. Uh, I chose to put it on because I just love how forgiving it is. And what you're going to notice with this blade is it doesn't cut everything right away. So I could travel all the way up into those lengths where I hit that number one. As long as I keep it on the corner, I'm not going to have problems. And it's really going to help put my blend together really nice. What we got for comments? But just so you know, you can kind of come back a little bit. Hold on. Let me check these out. So, all right. So here we are, right? Blends coming together. And just so you know, you can kind of slide down here. Good stuff. Hello from Chicago. I appreciate you, Lionel Martinez. Indiana really, really is in the house. What's up? He said, is it me or is the video gone really shaky? It, it did go a little shaky here. Let me see if we can't find a way to steady this guy out a little bit. All right. So we're about to detail the blend. Here, try to lean on this thing a little bit. So I leave this here and try to like sort of balance it so it's on there. Better? No, a little bit. Or, or, hold up, this might actually help. Oh. Sorry guys, hold up, we're, we're trying to figure out. Okay, we're back, sorry. That was terrible. So now, it should get a little bit steadier. Better? Yep. All right, y'all let me know if he keeps shaking. I'm gonna have to straighten him out. All right, so again, I'm keeping this corner and I'm just gonna detail this blend a little bit. Now is when you can kind of play with your lever. You can get away with a lot because you got the taper blade going here. So along with the taper blade, I wanna make sure that I am getting in any of those little areas and breaking those up. You can tip this thing on its side. So when you sandwich the blend, you're kind of talking about bringing the bottom of the fade up a little bit higher and uh, preserving some of the darkness up here. That's that's I, kind of the challenge. I think what Sandra is asking is what cordless clippers comparable to their original Oster 87. Um, so you're, you're talking about the Oster 76 probably. Uh, so the original, the most comparable one is this one right here. This is a, this is a Volt. Um, I mean a Volt. It used to be called a Volt. This is an Oster Octane. So this is a great clipper, by the way. I've had this for like 10 years. It's just, I don't really like using it because I got a little bit of trouble with my ears and it's, it's super loud. It really is very loud and I don't really like dealing with the noise anymore as much. So all right, on this side, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to slap that half guard back on with my taper blade. And I'm just, I'm just being careful here. I got this blend coming together really nice. And the last thing I want to do is uh, create a problem. You know, these cuts take a while. It might seem simple, especially if I'm explaining myself, but like if a guy walks in, he's like, oh, I want a two on the back and sides with skin. Like, I mean, that doesn't mean that it's a rush job. Like it, it's still, there's still challenges here and uh, there's still certain things you gotta be careful about. Got the number one on. Uno is a great mini shaver. And this BRG aren't bad either. I don't know about the Andis uh, BRGs. I, I almost feel like, as a, as a whole, I almost feel like I don't really find myself using detachables that one more. You guys know that I was one of the biggest advocates of using detachables before. Eddie, do you recommend alternative to Vimo Studio 2-pack LED light panel? They seem to be unavailable. Oh, well... I probably could do a re uh, I probably could do a, another video on the lights because there's definitely some lights that that you could use. But off the top of my head, I, I'm not 100% certain what they're called. All right, so I got the sabers, and this is what I put the line in with. So I'm just gonna go through in some of the spots, and I'm just sort of tapping the corner of the blade. I'm not really trying to create issues for myself. Uh, we're on the home stretch of this blend. And you guys are gonna see, there's just a like a couple little spots that's gonna make it, it's gonna make it a little bit better. Remember on this side, I said there was gonna be a couple spots that I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get out with the fade blade. That's what I'm doing now. Can you make a tutorial video on how to do basic design parts? Sure. 
Why does my clippers get so hot? I oil them when I use them. What clipper? Which blade would you recommend for an absolute hitter? Absolute hitter? Um, I would get a I would get a gold X Pro blade. That would that would cause a big improvement. The gold X Pro blades are really really nice. What's up, Jay Beats? Jay Beats and Waves, what's good, man? I know y'all been hanging, and you see the people who are highlighted. Those guys are members, so make sure that you don't skip their comments. Make sure that I'm, you know, I want to make sure that I'm providing a good service. For them guys. Really the barber. Thanks, buddy. Really, really. You know the Colts might get a smackdown by the Bills this year, really. I'm just saying. I know he's a Colts fan. Alright, we're just about done. I'm just about touching up little by little here. Uh, where I went under with that trimmer. I felt like maybe I could just take a step up. Hit that like button. <laughs> Smash that like button if you think the Bills are gonna win the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> And smash it if you think they're going to lose the Super Bowl this year. But I don't know, man, you know. I got high expectations this year uh, for the Bills. And I'm not, I'm, you know, I, I hate having that. Like, I like to be that sneaky underdog that just wins the games, you know. But we're not really that underdog anymore. We're, we're definitely a, a, a favorite to win the Super Bowl. As far as Vegas is concerned, uh, we're going to do the front of the edge up. So I already put hairspray in it. But you can see that some of his hair, it's a, it's a little messy in the front. Some of the bangs are, you know, a little bit longer, but that's okay. So I can see that like his bangs sort of stick out about this far. So that's where I want to go. I don't want to cut into his hairline too, too much. So <laughs> you know, why don't you stand over here? We can get a little better light on the situation. Cause he's got that light directly from above. And you probably could even balance this thing like right up here. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Go get your walking. All right, hold up, y'all. I gotta get uh, I gotta get my camera situated. No, no, I got a plan. I got a plan. I'm sorry. This is part of being live, y'all. It's part of being live. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how well this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try something. And let me see if I can zoom in. Oh my god, I can zoom in. All right, I can't read comments right now, but I promise I'm gonna go right to them as soon as, as soon as I'm done. I can sort of see them though. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go right where I said, right at the top of his bangs. I'm not about to leave a whole bunch of bangs. I'll give him a nice straight lineup. You can see these trimmers are just deep. And I barely gotta go into his hairline if I do it that way. That's what I'm all about, man. Trying to preserve as much of the edge up as possible. A lot of you guys ask about this little blade that I got on the trimmer. I love this blade. However, I just want to mention that the other blade that comes stock on it, the longer one, you know, like it's, it's just as good. There's no reason why uh, you would be at any disadvantage. It's just, it's just kind of fun to use this little blade. And I'm kind of one of those people that like, even though I test a lot of products, like once I find something that's working really good, a lot of times I just, I just leave it. Like I hate changing my equipment when it's working really good. I don't know if you guys get like that, but I've always been like that. I was talking about this with somebody else. Like back in the day when we had the GTX, I was talking about how uh, I had a GTX. That, I had about 10 GTXs. All of them sucked. And then finally I drew the lottery and I had one that was good. It wasn't even set close or nothing, but I refused to take it apart because I knew there's a good chance that I'd have to do some wizardry to, to get it to start working again. I was sort of like one of the people that people brought their their outliners to. A lot of people brought their outliners to me to try to get them to work right. It's kind of funny, but uh, there was a lot of steps to it, man. It was so, shit is so much easier now. Oh my God. The so move right there, and we pretty much. You know, we pretty much shaved off any other portion of the edge, so that's looking good. All right, you're going to notice that little area right here, a little darker, right? 
not flipping you off. It's just a little darker. So we're going to actually see that if, if it actually is down to a number two or not, I'm going to just, I'm just going to run that over actually with a one and one half open. So I'm just going to fade the very front of that a little bit lower. That'll help remove any of those dark, dark spots. That looks a lot better. You know, that gets rid of that a little bit. Looks a lot better. Shaved it off, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking down at his beard, like, okay, God, I'm gonna do the beard, and uh, no, I'm not gonna do no beard because there ain't no beard there. That looks a little bit better. Notice that the camera was getting a little dark. It's probably the lights, you know. When I use a cell phone, it really, it really kind of ruins the quality a little bit. All right, we're gonna use our razor, y'all. I got my 245. Use a little bit of that, don't want to cut them. And uh, here's where we can really make the edge sort of pop and stand out. And then maybe we'll use the 245 pencils just for some fun, what y'all think? You want me to use enhancements on him? If you want to use enhancements on him, give me a thumbs up and we will give him a real fresh edge up. All right, we got our uh, Essence Razor from Tidalus. I have it set so that the blade sticks out a little bit. You can set these however you want. And um, I like them to stick out a little bit because I want to see exactly where we're going. So I'm going to begin right here in the one little area that I had to go into his hairline. And I'm going to go ahead and just start shaving down with the gray. If you notice, I'm using a lot of like little anchor points, little anchor points, like my middle finger and my hand. Like I got like three points of contact before I try to set it on the skin, and that allows me to really release pressure with the razor and not put too much pressure on his skin. Um, it's not going to cut any better just because you're pushing harder. You only think it's going to. So I could just sort of hover it, begin moving it, and I'm, I'm barely, barely putting any pressure on his skin. So again, right here, my, my middle finger is anchored right there, and it's sort of like a small pivot, and I kind of just pull it. I'm also pulling the skin a little bit. Same thing here. I'm going to eventually go uh, against the grain. Before I do that, hope I'm not in front of the camera. I probably am. Oh, wow, you guys can actually kind of see that a little bit. Good. I've got the camera, like, super high on the desk right now. I'm sorry, y'all. I know you're a little further away than I wanted to be. I need to have somebody just all day long. If you guys you guys keep becoming members, I'll just hire somebody all day long to hold the camera. And we'll just sit here and we'll do this all day. I'll do it with every client. $5.99 a month. Not bad, right? And just in case you think I'm getting rich, I only get 70% of that. YouTube's got to get their cut. All right, so you guys want to see a little enhancement line on him? We can do that. Before we do that, I'm going to take a pair of scissors. I'm going to use these to help me square off this edge up. Any little hairs that stick out, this is typically easier uh, to do with scissors. To really try to square out them corners. Cool. 
All right, so let's check this edge out, make sure it's all pretty good before I uh, before I go to enhance it. I want to make sure that this, this edge up is as good as it can be uh, because otherwise you're going to wind up kind of enhancing a, a not perfect edge, which don't get me wrong, y'all, it takes a little bit of time to get these right. A lot of times when you use the razor, especially against the grain, you'll create a little bit of overhang, and that's all I'm doing in this step. Perfect. I'm trying to use my mirror a little bit. I'll get this as close to good as possible. That way when the enhancements do come out, um, he's looking good. All right. So, definitely going to want to use not onyx black. Let me find one. Black brown. It's the black brown right here. And let's we'll see if I can maybe flip this camera around. Oh, this ain't bad. Didn't have to be that high, I guess. All right. And let me just put the camera around. I'm sorry. Boom. Now I can read your uh, comments. So let's go, let's go through them real quick. Nice cut. Appreciate you. Enhancements. Everybody says enhancements. All right, cool. We're going to do it. When do you not like using shave gel? I don't use shave gel on certain people like, like when it's really, really faint and there's no great reason and it's just gonna create a mess, I won't use shave gel. Um, certain kids, it's like vellus hair is there and it's not really it's not really worth it to just go goop them up with a bunch of shave gel. So that's the only time that I typically won't, won't use it. If I think I can get away with just using a little bit of water, a lot of times that's, that's what I'll use. So, all right, I gotta get my Sean Cutter color card out. And I just showed you guys, we're gonna use black brown. And the way this works, is just simple you just pour it into the gun i know a lot of you guys are going to ask there's this little uh, ball inside it's really important that you shake this up good ah, all right feels good so i shake that up good because this this will cause the gun to splatter if it's not if it's not mixed up that's why it's like so smart that um 245 put that ball in there it just makes it really good so i'm just going to put a little bit straight into the gun i've had some great luck with this gun Great luck, all right? And the first thing I do before I spray it on the client is I need to make sure that the great luck I had with this gun keeps on. I wanna see what color that's coming out. It's still mixed with a little bit of water because that's how I clean the gun. So like now that I got it coming out good, nice fine mist, there's no um, blotches or nothing, I know I'm good. The last thing you wanna do is put this on the, on the scalp. It stains the scalp and then you can't get it out. So I don't think Oh, I can zoom in on this. All right, cool. Cool, cool. Put your head straight and down just try to hold it right like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start right in the middle. And I'm noticing like I'm kind of like spraying it up on an angle a little bit. And then the nice thing about this color card. I don't want to go crazy here. I don't want to look, look, look too, too crazy. I just want to kind of like enhance it just a little bit. Maybe putting this in a little bit darker, uh, but that'll help it last a little bit for him too. You know, so like tomorrow and the following day, it'll obviously start to wash out some, uh, but it's still going to look pretty sharp. Now, if you have like a mist spray and it, and it doesn't come out uh, perfectly where you want it, you probably got about a second. Um, if you got your razor nearby, so I want to keep my razor nearby when I do this. You got a second where you can maybe move the line a tiny bit. All right, so that's actually really good. It's looking good. I'm happy with that. Looking pretty sharp. How's that edge look, bro? <laughs> <laughs> looks super strong, bro. Yes, sir. It does. All right. So now, I'm just gonna clean up around his ears with the razor real quick. Like this is kind of what I was talking about. I pretty much got almost everything with the. Um, 
electric shavers. Pretty much everything with the electric shaver, so there's hardly anything there. That's, that's why sometimes I won't use a little bit of shave gel uh, just for that reason. So, all right, now, now let me grab my 245 pencils. He said in that smile, Hold up, I'll be right back. I gotta grab my pencils. Yeah, got it. All right, y'all. Um, I don't know. I might be able to get away with using the white one for once. Let's let's try it. This skin's light enough, or maybe I can. If it isn't good, I could always wipe it off. <laughs> All right, so there we go. I just sharpened the pencil a little bit, and like what I've realized with this is sort of like less is more. So I just want to put like a small, a small little faint line right where the edge is, just underneath where I went my previous step. I don't need this to be super thick because the idea here is I'm going to come back with the trimmer. I'm going to come in with it upside down and I'm sort of going to blend it back in. I also use my finger a little bit. Sort of creates like a little ash line effect. And uh, it's really one of those things that looks really good on camera. Actually, I, th I think the white is the, the move here. White was the good move. And as you can see, my white versus my, my beige part of the pencil, uh, the beige part of the pencil is getting a lot more action than the white part. Kind of funny. But the beige just looks so good on almost every single skin color. Unless somebody's, you know, extra, extra white, I pretty much wind up using the beige color. Like, I don't know if it's with you guys, but like, I feel weird moving the pencil this way. So I feel a lot better sort of pulling the pencil towards me. Just personal preference, I guess. I was getting my tattoo last night and I was kind of thinking about that. Like, glad I'm not a tattoo artist because they got to move their, they got to move their hands in ways that are just like, would be really hard for me. Like, yeah, like when I come here, it just feels best for me to kind of come right here. Cool. So now, come through, we'll blend it out. guys do enhancements you guys have ever have you guys ever messed around with pencils more, more importantly because I, I think the pencils really uh, the pencils really tend to make what you're doing stand out really makes the line stand out really helps you get a really sharp Instagram quality kind of photo you know I just use my pinky to kind of if it's a little thick in any area I just use my pinky to kind of help spread it out some But generally, it's just pushing the clipper, pushing the trimmer up in and underneath it. That's the edge up, y'all. And let me let me flip this camera around so you guys can actually see the rest of the cut appropriately. I'm zoomed in super far. So, all right, let me get let me get my lighting situated. And you guys will see like the way the cut really looks more like that. A little bit of pencil on the top of his. <laughs> and that line, man, that lineup looks, looks super sharp. So, whoa, I'm zoomed in. Y'all are pretty much up my nose. All right. So what'd you guys think of the cut, man? Do you like this content? And uh, what's the best way to get the sharp corners? We just we just talked about that, but I like to use I like to use the shears, and I I get the shears you know kind of in here and in here, and that really helps to to sharpen off the corners. It's, it's a little bit easier to use shears um, than it is to use your your trimmer sometimes. So, and we just just to recap, 
All right. I let you guys kind of pick the order of steps that I was going to use to do this. So we put a really harsh skin line in. We put a really harsh skin line in. And uh, yeah, if you miss the cut, it's going to stay up. You know, as soon as I'm done with this live, it's, it's going to repost and you guys can go back and you can check this out. He said, uh, so when I, when I put this skin line in really harsh, that's how I would typically deal with that. He said, that lineup is sharp, bro. I'm a big fan of the lives. Me too. Woo woo. All right. So check out into this, man. This is, this is no, no camera, no camera shit. I'm telling you, this is the real deal. Watch this. You tell me if there's a damn hair underneath his neckline and there's not. There's not a damn hair underneath his neckline. These things, they do exactly what they're supposed to do. I just got a notification that says Josh Allen is a creature. He's a creature. <laughs> He's a savage. So what I do to make sure that they don't leave with hair on them in the back here is uh, I'm just, I'm just going to shave that actually with the razor. And this is kind of what I was talking about, uh, about using a little bit of water. I don't really want to send him out with a bunch of gooey stuff on his neck and it's not a lot of hair there so i should be able to do this without cutting them and i can tell almost right away if this blade is dull blade's kind of dull not gonna lie comparatively to how it was when we began but yeah this will help send them out send them out clean so yeah that's the thing man with this with this format with it live you guys can kind of pick the way i do it I'll do it any way you want. Maybe next time we'll put the line in, the original line, we can put the line in with a taper blade. I think that would be kind of cool. I do that a lot. Uh, we, could, we could do things a little bit differently. If you guys would rather me go through and blend certain areas, like you guys can kind of pick the direction that I go. And to me, it really doesn't matter. Because I think that if you're a real expert of your craft, what you do is you experiment. And I've been experimenting now for about, well, 20 years. I started doing this in 2003. And I can't really say that I've always had the same system. Year in and year out, I make little changes in what I view as improvements. And hopefully, if you guys watch my channel, you can skip the whole 20 year thing. And, and you can just make those improvements um, for, for yourself, you know, right now. I would love to be able to save you guys that struggle, save you guys all that extra work that I did. Boy, your beard could be so thick right there. <laughs> now his beard wasn't super thick. He tried. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to put a little bit of aftershave on him, but I'm going to go outside there, I guess, to go get some. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this content. looks like we've been going at it for about 57 minutes, so I'm going to clean him up and get him out of the room. I appreciate you guys all for hanging out with me. It looks like we held down about 50 to 60 people up in here. And shout out to my boy Austin for letting me do this whole thing live. No, only go to Eddie Uptown <laughs> Barbershop, the best barbershop in Naples, Florida. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So uh, if you guys want to um, ask any questions or whatever, leave it in the comments below, and I'll get back to you guys later. I got a bunch of other people coming in. And I'm trying to film some videos on some things. So this is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Miss Ready Barber, and I'm out of here. Peace. Thank you, William.